Welcome back. Uh, so today we are going to work on pandas. We're going to continue to work on analyzing data using pandas and the topic we're going to cover today is called joining. So sometimes data you want is separated over two tables. Um, so these principles are kind of illustrated in a databases class. So if you've ever taken a databases class, you'll be very familiar with this. Um, but if you're not, you know, the concept is pretty simple. You don't want to store all your data in a single massive table necessarily. Um, sometimes there's lots of good reasons in order to separate data into different tables. So an example of this is um, if you worked for an airline, you might have a table that contains information about each passenger. So this, this passenger table would list information about you, your first name, your middle name, your last name. And it would also have information like a home address, maybe credit cards on file, uh, frequent airlines, frequent flyer airlines, etc. And so every single passenger that flies for you is a row within this table. You also probably have a table on flight information. So this flight information lists things like what is the flight number, um, what are all of the passengers that are on the flight, what type of plane it is. Lots of information that's specific to the flight. What's the starting airport? What's the ending airport? What is the time? And so the information of these two tables is so separate that you would never want to store all of that in a single table. But you might want to join this information. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you wanted to know, for example, how many passengers on a specific flight lived in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to first look at the flight and see what are all the passengers that are in there. And then you'd have to take the passenger information and then look in that passenger table and then look for their home address and then filter those for, the, for those that live in Atlanta, Georgia. And so this is where joining is useful. So the flight table doesn't contain the home address of the passenger, but it does have a way to look up that data because the name of the passenger is stored within that table. So if, if you were a biologist, um, you know, there's many examples for biological illustration of this as well. So if you're a field biologist, if you're an ecologist, you know, you might have locations where you make observations of data. And so, you know, if you are if you're a field biologist, you probably go to many different sites throughout the year and, and make observations. Or maybe you have, you know, uh, cameras set up in order to observe things automatically. So you might have a table that lists information about all the sites that you are observing. So, you know, if you go to, uh, if you go to Sh uh, Joliet, Illinois, or if you go to uh, Yosemite, California, if you go to some sort of island, you know, that is a site where you might be making observations. And so you probably want to include information such as the GPS coordinates of that location, the state of the location, information about weather patterns, so monthly average temperature, rainfall, and you might want to look at this at the, at the level of monthly um, altitude. So it all makes sense to store that data in this table of that explains the sites that you're observing. You know, you're probably also making observations about specific species. So, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of species that will live in a given location, but you're probably not going to make observations of most of those. So you might have a table that lists all of the species that you're interested in. So this could include taxon taxonomic taxonomic information, so the species, the genus, the kingdom, you know, there's there's a, a dozen different levels of taxonomy that, that each species belongs to. And so you might want to include all of that information um, within that table. You might want to have information, for example, about the average height and weight of the species, so how large a species is. Uh, um, you might want information about the brood size, so how many babies they typically have. You might want to have information about when the breeding season is. You might want to have information about mating and social behavior. Are these aggressive animals? Are these monogamous animals? Are these polygamous animals? Who they're mating with? So these are all examples of information at the species level. 
And then third, you might have a table of observations. So if you go to the site, you want to in, you want to list all of the species that you observe. So you would also include in this table, you would include the date that the observation was made, the site location where it was made, and then also the species that was observed. And so we've separated this data into three different tables. And so you do this for five years, you make observations for five years, and let's say you're a PhD student, and at the end of the five years, you wanna make analyses that go into your thesis. And so to do that, you need to combine data from three different tables in order to, to, make, to, to, to make some sort of like uh, analysis that summarizes all of your all of your work. So you know you might be interested in a species, a specific species, and you might wonder: Is this species more likely to be found at a specific altitude, or is this species more often to be found at a specific temperature? And so you can do this if you're able to join all of this data together and group all of the species that live, you know, at a, group all of the sites um, at a certain altitude and then, and then group the species together to, to kind of determine how often you make observations. So again, this is what joining does and it allows you to combine data from two or more tables. So this table, this, this figure right here is kind of an illustration of what a join does. So in, the, in, the, in this case, we have a table of the most common names from the USA, and we have a table, table two, that is the most common names uh, from Europe. So there are six names, the six most common names in the USA, and then the six most common names in the Europe. And so one of the things we might wanna do is, is ask, are there any in common between these two continents? And so this is where a join can be very useful. So if we join the table on uh, the first name, we would look for any sort of element within this table that matches any sort of element within this table. And so for example, the second name right here, Steve, matches the fifth element in this table. So Steve is present in both tables. Tim is present in both tables, and then Paul is present in both tables. So if we join these together, we can do what's called an inner join, and that lists all of the data that is in common. And so you'll notice that we've listed all of the data from the first table. So you know this first table has two columns, the second table has two columns, and so the result of the join is a table that has four different columns. So information from the, the first table and then information from the second table. So this is repeated right here. So there are four different types of joins that you can do. So in the first case, we looked for the intersection. So this is, this is the data that is in common based upon those rows. So an inner join only includes data records that are shared by both tables. So we had to specify what column we wanted to join on. So if we joined on ID, that would be a different, different result. So because these tables have all have one through six and these tables all have one through six, the outcome of an inner table, inner join on ID would be six different different things. But we joined on first name, so there's only three. So an inner join is the intersection. So only three rows would be returned in the above example. A full outer join is uh, the union of the two tables. So all of the data would be included. So we would include all, we would include the three that are in common. And then there's also three names that are not present in the second table, but are present in the first table. So Mark, James, and Clyde would also be included. And then Juan, Helmut, and Vincenzo, Vincenzo would also be included in a full outer join. So there'd be a total of nine rows that are returned in this join. If we do a left outer join, we would include all of the data from this first table and then joined on the table two. So this would be six rows that would be returned and then a right outer join would be all of the data in this table along with the intersection of this. So again, a total of six rows would be returned. So each of these joins are useful in different situations and so you have to analyze kind of what you're trying to do to determine what exactly you wanna return. So 
typically in a database class, you would learn how to do this in a language like SQL. And we are not learning SQL because Pandas allows you to do a lot of the, this functionality um, just using the Pandas module. So the primary function that we're going to use is called merge. And so you can see the, the manual page, the API um, for this function by clicking on this link right here. But the job of, of merge is to do these types of join. So it's to join multiple tables together. So let's see an example of this. So we are going to read in. So we'll go into Python. So we're going to import pandas, and then we're going to read a couple of example tables. So this is the world demographics table. So we've seen this a bunch of times before. So this lists uh, the population for a country by age. So Afghanistan, the number of, of children that are zero to one years old is approximately 1.13 million. We've also, looked at COVID-19 and we've seen how the risk of dying from COVID-19 is dependent upon your age. And so in a previous example, we have created a pandas table that has the IFR information um, by age. So this is the risk factor if you're 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, all the way to 100. So if you do not have this table, if you have not created this table yourself, um, I have uploaded a copy of mine in the example data. And so again, we use the index column equals zero because this data includes an index that was saved to the CSV file. So why do we want to merge this information? So one of the goals that we had was to predict the number of people that would die if they were infected by um, COVID-19. And so if we want to calculate how many people between zero and one would die if they were infected, so if the whole country of Afghanistan was infected, we would have to multiply this number right here times this number right here. And so we want to join this data together because we want, we want to have for each of these rows an IFR um, uh, specific to that age. And so this is where, where it can be very powerful. So we are using the merge function. And so in this case, we are using a couple of, um, a couple of these arguments in order to get it right. So first, we send it the, the name of the first, um, I'm sorry, this is, uh, so, We are sending it the name of the first table. We are sending it the name of the second table that we wanna to join together. And then we are listing the columns that we want to join on. And so this is just saying, you know, include, you know, what, what data should be added from this table? What row should be added to this table? And so we're specifying if the left column here matches the right table column here, then we want to include this data and add it to the table. So that's what the left on and right on allows us to do. So we can specify. So if these columns had different names, so in this column, in this table, it was called age, age um, with a lowercase a, and in this case, it was called age with an uppercase a. Like you want to be able to merge it even if they don't have the same name. So the left set tells me the name of the column in, in this table. The right tells me the name of the column in this table. And then you also have to specify what type of join. So again, we talked about there's four different types of joins that you can do. So in this case, we just want to do an inner join. And then we're going to save this result to a brand new table. So we run this, and so now we see that we have a table that includes, that's a little bit larger than before. So the size of world demographics is 20,301 rows and six columns. And so the, the output now is, is the same number of rows 
but we've also added an additional column. And so that is because we've added this column right here to, um, to, this, to this table. So IFR is now a column within this table. And so you know, you'll notice that it's been reordered. Um, so no longer, no longer is it ordered by country. Now it's the order is age, and so that's why it looks a little bit different. So the Afghanistan age one is now you know it occurs later on in the table. So and if we wanted to sort it back to kind of the original, we can use the sort values method and then specify we first want to sort by population ID and then by age. And so now we've got it back to normal. So now we kind of have this data together in a way that we really want it because, um, Uh, because now we have this data connected together. So if we wanted to figure out how many people were going to die, you know, all we have to do is multiply the number at are alive times the number IFR. And so this, you know, gives us a prediction you know, if everyone in the country of Afghanistan died or was infected, then 22 children between zero and one would die. And we can now um, save this as a brand new column within this table. And if I get that syntax right, then this would not be a problem. So we specify a new column called predicted deaths, and that's equal to the data that we just calculated right here. And so now we see there's eight columns, there's this brand new column called predicted deaths. And so now we can calculate the total population for each country along with the total number of predicted deaths. So if we did if we did a sum, you know, we return the sum of all of the columns, but we only want we want to specify and filter this down just to the number alive and then the predicted deaths because those are the only two columns that make sense to sum. And so now we have this table that's 200 rows, one row for each country, and then there's two columns. One is number alive, so that's the total population, and then the other is the predicted deaths. And so, you know, in a previous example, one of the things we were trying to calculate was the predicted IFR for the entire country. And so we can do that. We set this new column equal to the total number of predicted deaths by the number alive. And so now we've got all of the data that we want. So it takes a little while to get used to grouping and kind of doing these more complicated operations in pandas, but hopefully you can appreciate the power of it because you know you can achieve a lot with very few lines of code. So previously when we tried to calculate this, we had to do all sorts of loops, all sorts of if statements. You know, we probably had like 30 lines of code in order to in order to do this analysis. But now we can do this analysis in like four or five lines. Actually, we could do it in a lot less depending on you know, how compact we really wanted to make it. So this hopefully gives you an a illustration of the power of joining and why you might want to join tables together. And then another illustration of the power of grouping. So we, how you can group rows together um, in order to analyze and get the data that you want. And I think that is the end of this lecture.